I'll admit it, I did not expect Olympia Kos and Fenerbahce going 5 games. Probably neither did you. But Dimitris Itoudis had a plan that made it interesting. In a clash of two completely different approaches, this matchup for Itoudis was about exposing the other team's weaknesses, while for Bartsokas it was about trusting his philosophy until the end without reacting too much to what the other coach has brought to the table. Itudis' plan started with a thought-risk experiment on how to limit the greatness of Sasha Vizenkov. And that was quite intriguing. He instructed his players to go under the majority of ball screens with Walkup or Papa Nicolaou. This way, the point guard was disconnected from the team since nobody helped on his pick and rolls, forcing him to shoot from outside every single time. The first solution against Under is beating it with speed, but a few times the American tried it, he crashed into the opponents and got called for the offensive foul. Other times he did the right thing, shooting the open free. They simply did not want to fall down, with Thomas finishing the series with awful shooting percentages, 39% from 2 and only 18% from 3. Despite that, and because of this defensive tactic, he still took more shots than Vezenkov in Game 4, where Olympiakos lost. Walk-up three, short. He struggled tonight, trying to find his form. Another player struggling to shoot and making Itudis' tactics look super successful was Papa Nicolaou. However, he did manage to break out of the slump and became the X-factor in the decider. Playing through sickness, he provided a huge spark right from the start. Bartokas wants to establish him early and decides to attack with him in the first possession. Forward tries to beat the under with speed, beats his opponent to the paint and sees the first shot of the evening go down. That's all it took. Later on, he knocks down a three-pointer from a nice double drag into a hammer set, making only his second three-pointer of the series. Then, with Hayes Davis glued to Vizenkov, K-Pop tried to imitate his role as an off-ball cutter. Two great timely cuts to save Lucas from turning the ball over converts into four crucial points and Olympia Kos can breathe thanks to their captain. Well, such good defense by Fenerbahce, but then Papa Nicolau picks up loose ball. Talking about Lucas, he was basically the center point of the whole series. Without his buzzer beater in game 3, we are probably talking about Fenerbahce in the final four right now. But once again, the Greek point guard showed he is unstoppable in the clutch and why he hasn't missed many final fours in his career. However, Dimitris Dudis made him work for this extremely hard. Knowing and seeing their own problems in half-court basketball with Kalatis on court, Itudis did not bother to target certain players on defense and attack them in ISO situations. Vezenkov got this treatment in the end of game 2 when Marko Guderic searched for his switches. But Slukas was targeted even more. If he guarded Carson Edwards or Dorsey, you could catch Itudis signaling to make space and let them cook. Fenner were quite successful with it as Edwards scored on Slukas and Dorsey scored on Walkup more than a few times, punishing for overly aggressive defense. Look up close, Walkup is guarding Dorsey. Dorsey to the window! In Game 4, it was weird seeing Lucas matched up initially with Pierre. Itudis again did the same, instruct a post-ISO touch for his forward. Olympiakos were forced to double and those led to open shots on the weak side for others. Hayes Davis knocked down two as it helped Fenerbahce to tie the series at two games apiece. After this, I was asking myself and others why isn't Lucas guarding Goodrich initially? At least the mismatch in the post wouldn't be as big. I guess I got my answer at the beginning of game 5. Seeing Costas on Goodrich, Itudis involved him in much more pick and rolls. And guess what? Slukas allowed Goodrich to get hot quickly, and later the Serbian went on to scoring 8 freaks while all of his teammates did not manage to hit a single one all night long. Goodrich has to manufacture something on the dribble and he got it! But that wasn't all from Fenerbahce making Slukas' life difficult. Since he's such a master, at dissecting the opponent's pick and roll defenses where help is involved, Itudis decided to switch in a lot of these situations. They would match Dyson Pierre with him initially, put Hayes Davis on the center as it would give Fender great balance after the switch. It's not easy beating Nigel, who played a fantastic series, on the perimeter and Pierre can hold his own against Ballon Boy or Black. In games 1 and 4, this switching helped slow Lucas down, limiting him to 4 points per game, while also stopping Olympiakos' well-oiled offensive machine that saw little trouble during the regular season. But we all saw who got the last laugh. First of all, Slukas put up an amazing performance in Game 3, with Olympiakos needing at least one win away to come back to Piraeus. After nailing that improbable game winner where yes, he travels technically but 
If the refs called these on every catch, trust me, basketball would be unwatchable. He delivered another fantastic clutch performance in Game 5. Let's analyze these clips one by one. He tries to reject Goodrich to start, but isn't successful. He then repositions and knowing that Fenner will probably switch, he tries rejecting again, finding a free way to the rim with Motley in position to switch and not to protect the rim. Changing directions quickly is one of the things that makes Lucas one of all-time greats. He does it twice here and then the ref see Jakiri's contact with the leg first and not cost his push off with the arm. In the next clip, visitors pressure the ball and deny hard, breaking Olympiakos' offensive rhythm. They can't even get into the usual set. But who cares when you have Slukas? He looks at the clock before receiving the ball and goes to work. Another change of direction to get to his left hand so he can pull up, as he does exactly that against the great defense of Pierre. Slukas right in the depth of the shot clock with a mid range jump shot. Slukas was the main catalyst behind this 15 0 run in the second quarter, and after that, Olympia Koss never looked back. After his defense was constantly put to the test in this series, he demonstrated that his offense is still superior to any problems he might have on the other side of the court. To put the game and series away, it was him again, only in a creator role this time, and also in the simplest fashion nowadays possible. Spain pick and roll with power forward setting the back screen did the job. Olympiakos had already won game 3 by scoring 4 times in the second half from this play, so Fenner knew perfectly well what to expect. Despite that, the second half of game 5 saw another 4 positive instances for the Reds. Here we see Fenner with good pressure again as Olympiakos' flow is disrupted. Slukas attacks inside, Motley switches on him, but Goodrich and Pierre miscommunicate on who is taking the roller. And since on Spain, corner defenders are basically non-existent almost always, it's an easy dunk for fall. Keep pushing where it hurts. Literally next play down, they run it again and Goodrich this time cuts the pick under, staying in front of Slukas. No advantage created until Dorsey loses focus on the weak side, allowing K-pop to cut back door and save the possession. Etudes seemed to have planned everything more or less, but this pain pick and roll with Bezenkov setting the back pick was a mystery case until the end. The coach seems to want Pierre to go under here, yet they switch, but Motley gets brush screened by Sasha for a slight moment and it's enough for Slukas to beat him downhill. On the last play of the third quarter, they run it again and Fenner have a foul to give. Madly does not commit it, Hayes Davis is not in the best position to switch the back screen because they didn't do it before. He tries to get him from behind, but Costas has already picked the ball up and the party in Piraeus is starting. Obviously, it wasn't only about Slukas, but his role in this series for both teams was huge. There were also McKissick's speed, cannons and walk-ups on ball defense and denials, Vezenkov's aggressiveness inside against the switches, especially in game 5, and much more that couldn't fit in this video. Oh my word! But to sum up, Etudes put Fenerbahce in the best spot to succeed, yet Olympiakos still proved their greatness. We can say that both coaches stayed true to themselves and both came out as winners. One for giving the best regular season team a run for their own money, the other for guiding his team to the final four for the second straight season. What do you guys think? Are Olympiakos still the favorites to win it all? Let's discuss it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like this video and I'll see you next week for a final final four preview.